Close your eyes. Think of yourself and a red bike. You may have thought of different situations where the bike is present. Chances are you haven't thought of a bike isolated in a white background like this. You may have thought of something like this, like this, like this, or many others. According to Barcelo's theory, what you're imagining is defined as a situated conceptualization. This means that whenever we think of a concept, like a red bike, it appears as situated in a background or context. For example, when you think of the red bicycle, you're also picturing a setting, a relevant person involved, and the way he or she feels in that particular situation. Look at this extract. Here we can observe five of what Barcelo calls categories. The category of object, of setting, of agent, of mental state and of action. All of these combined form what's called a situated conceptualization. Each of these categories is composed of different features, or in Barcelo's terms, simulators, that are going to activate specific brain areas. In the case of the bike, some simulators would be the pedals, which may activate the motor strip together with the visual area, the seat, which may activate the somatosensory primary area for sensation together with the visual area. The chain may activate visual information together with the motor strip for the movement of writing. Also, the auditory association area if the chain is broken. All these neural patterns activate every time we think of a bike. A situated conceptualization has two phases. First, storage in long-term memory of multimodal states that is perception, action, and introspection. Second, the partial reactivation of the multimodal neural patterns for later reenactment. A situated conceptualization happens most of the time unconsciously. They occur frequently during perception, memory, conceptualization, comprehension, and reasoning. No, 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 no. I'm starting to envy the dead mouse. Get out the rubber ball. We're in solitary confinement. Riley can't live oh, here. That's great. We'll put the bed there and the desk over there. The hockey lamp goes there. Uh, put the chair there. Oh, the trophy clutch over there. there. Oh, the poster there. Stars. Stars. Yeah, I like that. Now we're talking. Let's go. The fact that we can create situated conceptualizations in our minds allows us to visualize events that haven't happened yet. That is to say, to make predictions. Whenever we see ourselves in a familiar context, a situated conceptualization for that moment becomes active. Because the situation is in some way similar to one experienced in the past, we can infer a possible future result. That happens due to a mechanism called pattern completion inference. The result of that inference may or may not be what we were expecting. If the prediction doesn't take place, the prediction is likely to be reformulated, which basically means that a new situated conceptualization with a new outcome might take place in our heads. These inferences represent a powerful source of prediction. If our predictions were indeed accurate, then the situated conceptualization will give us effective guidance as to how to interact with the current situation, that is to say, how to act or what to do then this conceptualization does not change, but instead provides us with further predictions. Barcelo coined the concept of pattern completion inference, which is a mechanism through which we are able to make predictions. The father is playing a trick on his daughter because he wants to see if she will cry. So basically, what it does is recreate a pattern that relies on the child's previous experience to reach an expected outcome. To make it more simple, the pattern goes, sound of something banging against the door, father automatically comforting the child to make the pain go away, the child cries. The thing is that the pattern completion inference process is so clear that the child's prediction, that is to say the crying, becomes an automatic response. Never mind that something as tangible and tied to the body experience as pain didn't actually happen. The child inferred the crying as a result of the bump on the head and the comforting attitude of the father. 
As future teachers, we should be aware that students' learning is always tainted with their own personal lives and experiences. We should see students as a whole, recognizing that they may have difficulties or problems outside the classroom that can affect their performance and attention. Barcelo suggests that when we live new situations, we create introspective meanings. For this reason, teachers committed to the learning process should provide students with plenty of options to deal with their feelings more confidently and in healthier ways. The Montessori pedagogy, for example, suggests offering students who have a tantrum an opportunity to find peace again by using an excellent technique that consists of giving the upset child a bottle filled with transparent glue and glitter. The teacher should separate the kids with tantrums from the rest of the class and give them the jar to breathe quietly while observing the movement of the glitter inside. The adult must emphasize the fact that the bottle is not a punishment. On the contrary, it must be considered a gift to find peace again. Barcelo says a person creates new simulators when attention focuses repeatedly on an object in experience. By paying explicit attention to the glue in the jar, children create new simulators. These would form positive responses to tantrums, helping them deal with frustration more healthily over time. Situated conceptualizations and projections are directly related to a background experience and the type of input we have received throughout our lifetimes. Depending on the amount of events experienced, the more situated conceptualizations we will be able to store in our memories and the more the predictions we will be able to elaborate. Some other factors, like gender, ethnic group and social cultural background, among others, may also influence the availability of picturing ourselves in a specific situated conceptualization. Creation of narratives Activity example Students will have to close their eyes for some minutes and listen twice to an audio of a story told with sound effects. The third time, they will write whatever situations come to their minds. Then, they will have to organize the information and write a narrative, always bearing in mind that the readers will need a great number of details to picture a mental imagery similar to one they have described in writing. The writers will also have to use a website or drawing, depending on the age or time available, to depict the narrative. The writers will give the narrative to their classmates. The classmates will read the narrative and use a website or drawings to represent the image they themselves, as readers, have created in their minds. As a final step, students will share and compare their drawings. They will be asked to explore all the new details of their own narratives and their classmates. Then, also collaboratively, they will gather all these details and try to build a richer story. The goals of this activity were to give students the tools to become more efficient in writing narratives, to build collaborative skills for group work, and to raise awareness among students about the value of diversity of thought and experiences.